the food in Padang has been an extraordinary discovery for me. I've rarely seen, in all the countries I've travelled so far, a display of food that's so vibrant, bold and explosive in flavour. This is one of the most amazing things in the world. There are two styles of serving food in Padang. The first one is called Pesan, in which you point and choose from an array of colourful options. The second one is Hidang, where a crazy spread of dishes is directly brought to you at the table. The society structure in West Sumatra is peculiar. Unlike the rest of Indonesia, which follows a patriarchal system according to Islamic traditions, Padang is a matriarchal society. Here, women hold power, inheritance and decision-making. Women play a central role in family and community life and they hold the secrets of one of the most incredible cuisine in the world. In this food tour of Padang, we visit the oldest coffee shop in town, an authentic Nasi Padang restaurant and the best satay Padang in the city. So we get coffee today with this legendary coffee shop in Padang, the oldest coffee shop in the city, serving Minan people and rarely some tourists since 1932. The interior, the decors, the tiles, everything has been preserved and even the menu which is simple and includes a variety of coffee and breakfast dishes. So everyone loves the coffee and the tea here, but particularly egg coffee and egg tea. The good thing about the coffee is that it's particularly strong. They use a variety which is called Sidi Kalang, essentially a robusta type of coffee which grows only in the proximity of volcanoes, active volcanoes. And the coffee beans are said to have a spicy, salty and sweet taste with a tonality of caramel to them. It's a really strong coffee. You can faintly taste the egg in there. It's really nice. This will wake you up for sure. You want this without sugar or anything really added. The strong aroma of the coffee and the kind of faintly sweet caramel dimension to it. And the little bit of lemon that provides some zest. You look at this environment, like only local people probably coming here for years and years. Legendary coffee. Nasi Padang is famous across Asia. Many people have this beautiful meal in Padang restaurants across cities like Jakarta or Singapore, but actually few people come to Padang itself. But that's where you find the real deal, traditional restaurants serving the essence of Nasi Padang, with dishes that are unapologetically bold and spicy. A few locals recommended me Pagi Sore, a restaurant run by an enthusiastic auntie. She is famous for making an exceptional nasi padang, including the best fried chicken in town. To me, this looks like uh, 10 out of 10 fried chicken. It's just so beautiful with all the coconut on top. I'm just gonna give it a bite because I can't resist. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna split it a little bit and get a bite of this thing. I was wrong, this is not 10 out of 10 chicken, this is 15 out of 10, maybe 20. It's incredible, perfectly crispy actually, not oily at all. Doesn't feel like you're actually touching fried chicken. You know how fried chicken can sometimes kind of be tough. This is super tender. The coconut, the grated coconut on top, just give it this kind of a little bit of sweetness. It's gonna be difficult to go back to normal fried chicken, KFC kind of thing after you have this. Just so pure, crispy. Yumminess. Not overdone with spices, not overdone with flavors, just the, the pureness of crispy golden chicken. Probably one of the best fried chicken I've ever had. Actually. The next thing that we're gonna have in this Padang feast is the rendang curry. Look how dark, brown and thick. Rendang is this super world famous kind of food which has been rated multiple times by different ag food agencies as number one food in the world. It's essentially like a dry curry that cooks in a mixture of aromatic spices like turmeric, the cumin, the cinnamon, coconut milk, the tamarind paste, the galanga, the ginger, everything is in there to make this perfect dish. And, and I'm gonna put some of this incredible looking curry on my place. I think these are uh, beef kind of pieces and I've put some on the rice, make sure you get the rice get all covered in this nice sauce. I want to try the, the sauce with the rice first. I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut 
and this looks like a really good bite. I just want to have the flavor of the rendang first. This is incredible, incredibly rich and coconut in your mouth, just faintly, like mildly spicy, but the deepness of the curry, just the coconut obviously is predominates. We're gonna get a piece of this beef. The beef is not super tender, it's got this kind of natural beef taste, like quite stringy, you know, you need to kind of chew it a little bit, but mm. rendang really is one of my favorite foods in the world. And we were talking to the lady who owns the restaurant, she said that she cooks the rendang in a traditional way from 6am to 8pm kind of thing and that kind of shows into the richness of this curry and I think they must have not said that I love the curry and they actually brought some more rendang which is phenomenal we've got a variety of veggie dishes, greens and I think this is terong which is green eggplants mixed with green chilli and also salted fish then we've got also another kind of vegetable curry, but it's called pakis and it's like a, an Indonesian plant. It looks kind of similar to Morning Glory and it's covered in this kind of thick uh, padang gravy, mostly turmeric based. So we're gonna get some with the rice. Mm. I love the eggplants. You can see the salted fish and it's loaded with chilies. Ooh. That's a very spicy kind of bite, salty. Yeah, I love the eggplants. Um, it's got kind of a texture to it, so it's not super creamy. It's very nice. Now look at this huge meatball. I have no idea what this is. I've actually never seen this being served with previous nasi padang or nasi kapau that I've had. It looks like one of the, my non-nas meatballs. So I'm really curious to see uh, what it looks like inside. Starchy kind of meatball. I don't, I don't actually think you can actually call it meatball if there's no meat. But it's based on potato, then some greens, maybe onion, spring onion, and I'm gonna try this. Mm. Yeah, it's got a very light taste and um, potato based. The onion, spring onion flavor is intense, but there's not much else, so it's not very salty, it's just, just very purely like potato kind of flavor. I'm gonna do something very bold here. Just gonna cover this potato in rendang sauce. This is like a potato rendang kind of bite. Mm. To be honest, you can put that rendang sauce over anything and it will taste good. Obviously the nasi padang is made up of fish dishes as well. And here we've got spicy shrimp in balado seasoning. The ikan bakar, which is the fish grilled in padang sauce. It looks so orange and beautiful. And then we've got this other dish, which is, I think it's called, uh, in a milky, coconutty kind of curry with beans. And there is a huge piece of tofu. Actually, I'm gonna go for this right now. A little bit of a smoky kind of flavor and the top is just so smooth and I think these are chicken liver and chicken gizzard so I really need to go for this can't leave it on the table <laughs> looks really beautiful every time I look at this kind of padang sauce which is orange in color my face just smile automatically and I'm gonna try some with the rice big piece of gizzard I think it's a mix of liver and gizzard actually. So you got the creaminess of the liver and the kind of funny chewing texture of the gizzard. And because they had brought a second portion of beef rendang, it would be really rude to ignore it. So we are gonna oblige. I just can't resist this dish. Uh, this is one of the most amazing things in the world, in the entire world. It's difficult to not be romantic with this kind of food. I don't know when it's gonna be the next time I'm gonna eat beef and dung. So yeah, I'm sad. In the scorching heat of Padang, local people turn to their beloved afternoon drink, Es Jendol, a refreshing concoction of palm sugar, 
coconut milk and pandan jellies. And this is, I have to say, this is one of the most beautiful less chandol I've ever seen. They've got these pre-prepared glasses with pandan jellies and coconut milk and they kind of got like a homemade machine when they kind of shave some, a block of ice and they add some kind of brown sauce, brown sugar. And so the glass starts having all these kind of beautiful shades of green, brown and milky colors. And so what you have to do, I think, is to kind of mix... Oops! Well, I'm spilling some of it, but... Uh, yeah. Mmm! Oh my god! Not only this is super refreshing, but there's durian taste in it. And let's mix all these brown jellies, pandan green jellies and ice uh, until the drink kind of takes this almost like milkshake kind of colors yeah i think let's get a spoon maybe with some jellies super refreshing and yeah it's shredded durian i think intense durian flavor this is amazing jellies are very soft you don't actually have to chew them it's quite a sweet beverage but it's just super nice when it's so hot and i didn't come here randomly there's actually a very famous uh, street stall in padang right it's called es chendol patimura and they sell hundreds of it during the day and it's probably the best chendol in the world of padang i thought i was done with food for the day the problem is, you cannot walk in Padang without being attracted by the tantalizing aroma of food. So, I had to stop for a plate of satay Padang. We tried two versions of it today. A black spicy satay and a sweeter version of it. So, don't go anywhere. This satay is called satay Bahia Inda and it's one of the most famous in Padang. And it's also known as black satay because of the dark red kind of coloring of the meat. Not just the sauce, the satay sauce is also darker than, the, than other kind of satay in the city. People come here because the satay is particularly spicy and deeply aggressively flavored than other satay in the city. So you can see that the satay sauce has got ketupat, which is compressed rice cakes and the crispy shallots on the top it looks very very thick so then their cubes of beef meat are skewered make sure you just cover them in this thick dark sauce uh, they are not really big so for me it's necessary to get two uh, skewers at once to be happy with the bite spicy flavor but also lots of black pepper flavor i think this sauce has got crushed peanut as well which i absolutely love because it gives a little bit of crunch to the sauce um, oh yeah the sauce is like peanutty as well oh i love this as always the keto bat which is the compressor rice cake if you actually look closely at the meat it's red it looks fiery so I think both the sauce and the satay are actually spicy. And the meat of the satay has got a nice balance between chewiness and softness. The spiciness is building up. Whew. Initially it doesn't look very spicy, but then it kind of builds up, which is interesting. But yeah, it kind of pushes you to actually eat more of it. So we have ordered some ST, so tea with ice to just kind of wash your mouth of all this kind of fiery taste. This place is just amazing, like proper kind of street food ambience. 4 p.m. and people are already storming in. Yeah, the smoke is coming inside the restaurant. This is all part of the experience. And the other part of the show is the way they count the satay that you have eaten. It's one of the things that actually has made them famous. <laughs> <laughs> the street food activity carries through the night in Padang and I still got the second satay place to visit, Satay Ijab. Didn't want to miss this place, even though the satay looks similar to the previous one with the crispy shallots and the rice cakes. The satay test is unique here. The sauce is more yellow and sweeter in taste. The cubes of meat are pretty small. Okay, you could have 20, 30 of this. Let's give it a try. After a good soaking into the padang sauce, and make sure you get lots of this kind of dried shallots. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, pretty unique and this thing flavor. Pretty sweet. So the meat has got this kind of a sweet flavor and the sauces. There's a lot of um, taste of black pepper and it's slightly spicy, but the meat is is, 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 is sweetened. This is kind of a different flavor from a typical sade padang that I've had in the past. I'm gonna try to get some of this uh, long tongue, which is a rice cake. And you can see it's pretty compact and really needs a good hydration with this very thick sauce. Like, sauce is super thick. And you chase it with the meat. So you get about 10 of this in a portion. Hardly enough to kind of fill your stomach, in my opinion, but it's a nice snack in the evening. As always, there is a varied selection of crisps that you can have in your table to kind of try and accompany the satay. What I want to do is using some of these kind of dry crackers and scoop a little bit of the sauce. You can see that the shape is kind of functional to the scooping activity. I really want to collect all this rice cake with the satay sauce. It's just too good to leave in the plate. Super thick. And just to wash down everything, I've ordered some um, chin chow juice. Chin chow is essentially like a plant that grows in Indonesia. The leaf of the chin chow are squeezed into a juice. And you can also see this drink has got jellies in it. Really smooth, mild taste. Very faintly sour. A little bit of a, an herbal, fruity kind of aftertaste. So a very sad moment in your satay experience. There's only the dish left with some satay, but don't despair. We are gonna use again this nice crisp that's left to kind of scoop everything. Just crack it in a half. Make sure you get the shallots as well. Look at this. Today has been a pleasure, my friend. Give it a like if you have enjoyed it. And let's jump on the next food adventure.